Well, the trial is over and now the closing arguments are in. Arizona's presiding disciplinary judge will decide the fate of April Sponsel. She's the prosecutor who worked with police to invent a fake gang and charge protesters as members. The state bar of Arizona asking the judge to suspend her law license for at least two years. Our politically charged investigation is what led to all of this. And while the seven day trial wrapped last month, both sides just filed their written closing arguments. Here's ABC 15 chief investigator Dave Biscabing with their final words. April Sponsel falsely charged protesters. Her evidence either made up or wildly exaggerated. Those are the facts, backed not only by the court, but multiple outside investigations. And in their closing arguments, it's those facts that are the heart of the state bar's case. Now, as for April Sponsel, she says she still doesn't believe anything was wrong. She blames everyone else and that she was the, quote, scapegoat. And on that final point, she's not entirely wrong. The record will reflect the presence of Ms. Sponsel. Inside Arizona State Court building, the disciplinary trial against April Sponsel lasted seven days. Victims testified, so did experts, other prosecutors, the county attorney, and Sponsel herself. Do you admit to any unethical conduct during your prosecution of those cases? I do not. In Sponsel's denials are why the state bar, in its closing arguments, wrote she needs to lose her law license. Quote, in the face of overwhelming evidence against her, respondent unequivocally denies any ethical misconduct and cavalierly dismisses the actual and potential harm to the public, the profession, and the legal system. Was there anything that you presented you believed at the time was inaccurate or untrue? No. That means Sponsel really believes this group of protesters, many who never met before, was a gang. The problem? Our investigation proved she and Phoenix police invented the gang, named it ACAB, short for All Cops or Bastards. That's based on one of many things they chanted that night. We also obtained confidential grand jury transcripts showing Sponsel and police told jurors the group was organized like the Bloods, Crips, and Hells Angels. Did you believe you had sufficient evidence for a reasonable likelihood of conviction? Yes, and the evidence was actually getting better each day. Sponsel and a key police sergeant also claimed the protesters sharpened their fingernails and umbrella tips to attack officers. But pictures taken of the arrested protesters that night proved that was completely made up. Did you have pictures of sharpened fingernails? I had pictures of fingernails. Sponsel is married to a DPS trooper. The state bar arguing her relationship with law enforcement became a problem because she failed to verify any of their wild claims. In the state bar's closing arguments, they also highlighted, quote, a disturbing pattern of Sponsel's ready, fire, aim approach. Equally troubling is Sponsel's pattern of presenting factually inaccurate and incomplete grand jury presentations. Do you still believe that you used measured, ethical, and reasonable discretion to determine who to prosecute and who not to prosecute? Absolutely. The bar's closing arguments were filed on November 3rd. Sponsel's response just filed this week. Her attorney writing she was honest, diligent, did her best to pursue justice. Also arguing her unit was understaffed and under-resourced, and there was a lack of political and organizational leadership. But maybe Sponsel's biggest defense, her supervisors approved of her plan. Here's one of her direct supervisors, Vince Goddard, a former division chief. And you uh, concurred, correct? Yes. Did you run it up the chain of command? Yes. Who did you run it to? Alistair and Kelly. The county attorney? Yes. Sponsel also points to a meeting in the days before getting the charges. Multiple agencies met about the case. Phoenix Police Department, Maricopa County Attorney's Office, your, your superiors, were talking to the FBI and Department of Homeland Security as sources of information that you had to consider. Correct. Did the group reach a consensus? Yes. What was that consensus? Everybody was on board. To this day, Sponsel and her attorneys claim it's not her fault. She was just relying on the information she was given by police. Here's another line from their closing argument. A prosecutor is not God. A prosecutor is not all-knowing, all-powerful, all-seeing. Now, taxpayers, that means you at home, paid for Sponsel's defense. The county had previously approved up to 350000 for her outside lawyers. Now, as for a decision, that could still be weeks away. I'm investigator Dave Biscobing, ABC 15, Arizona.